Hey, what's up size viewers? Welcome back to another video. And this video is to kind of show you what I do to create these stories. And a lot of you are familiar with it. It's Sizebox and some of you aren't. And you guys know that Sizebox is a big sandbox game or tool that you can use to make stories or you can kind of just go inside of it, mess around and just, you know, have fun and do whatever. I use it to create stories. And I want to go ahead and show you what exactly I do specifically, though, to create those stories. So um, right off the bat, let's go ahead and talk about computer specifications. Now, I recommend personally that you have a casual gaming computer with 16 gigabytes of RAM and a lots of storage space available for your PC. And so um, you basically have a modern computer, a modern gaming PC, right? Now, you could run the software at a lower specification, like let's say eight gigabytes of RAM, but I'm gonna tell you right now that even from that, um, I was struggling to do that when I first started the stories. I had to lower the PC settings, I had to turn off shadows, and often or not, my computer crashed a lot to run Sizebox. And with that, it became very annoying, it became very difficult, and you really just want a computer where you can max settings so that you can have a beautiful looking um, screenshot whenever you make these stories. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what exactly you're gonna need to download. Now, what you're gonna need to download is, um, first download the latest version of Sizebox, and I put it on my uh, link on my Patreon for, um, so that you guys can get access to it and for those of you who don't use Discord, you can go onto the Sizebox Discord, or you can just go onto my Patreon for easier like finding of the links that they have available. These same links are the same ones that's on their Discord. I just posted it there because I know that some of you don't actually use Discord and are not familiar with it. What you're gonna do is you're gonna follow um, everything that you're seeing in this video, and you're going to read the Sizebox SDK user guide and it's gonna show you what exactly to download. Now, I know that it may seem technical, but it's not as technical um, as you think it is. And why, um, why I'm telling you to download the SDK is because this is primarily so that you can convert your own models. And I'm telling you this because if you wanna post this stuff on YouTube, I'm gonna tell you to not actually use the downloaded models on the Discord themselves. And primarily, that's mainly because of the fact that some of those models are created by other people. And also, they take on anime likeness of characters from animes that may kind of pose some legal trouble for you. And um, we're going to just kind of get to the point where, you know, you want to create your own models instead of actually using someone else's created content. You want to read their rules and make sure that you're following down to the to very line. Now, what you're seeing here is basically how to convert models, and I'm gonna get to that in another video because if I try to explain that to you, it can be kind of a lengthy process, but it's really easy. You'll see exactly um, how I do it, and that way it won't be too complicated, and hopefully, as I'm telling you this video, you'll follow along. The third thing is Vroid. That is all of the models that you have seen in my story so far. Vroid is the easiest tool you could ever use and you can basically make your own 3D model with just a couple of plugins, a little bit of texture changes, and you can also customize your models in every shape or way of form. And um, you're gonna wanna download that onto your computer as well. And also the Steam, um, the Steam version of Blender, which is a 3D modeling tool. And so um, I wanna be able to have you guys download those things and then I'm gonna try my best to go step-by-step -step process on how to use those things as well. Now, this video I'm showing you here is just a little introduction to Vroid, and you can really just mess around with Vroid with your, um, yourself. It is extremely easy, guys. Let me tell you, Vroid is the easiest tool you could ever use. They literally made 3, 3D modeling easy for the amateur gamer or user for the matter. Now, what is Vroid? If you ever been on v VR chat, people make their avatars using Vroid. And so you can see how you can quickly like customize like the eyes, the iris, and all sorts of other things. Like as you can see here on the left, 
and those are purchase textures that I use now mind you I want to also let you guys know about that and um, I'm gonna go into another video about the legal issues of using other people's textures and why you have to be very careful with that um, you can see here that there there's the face there's the eyeliners there's the mouth and I'm kind of just giving you a little bit of an overview on how I actually customize each character's like look now if you look on the side on the right you can see the parameters um, you can see how you can make the mouth bigger you can make her eyes smaller you can do all sorts of things you just have to um, kind of get into it and just mess around with it a little bit more and um, you can just do whatever you want to make the model look exactly how you are the good thing about these models is that they're yours they're your models and you can avoid a little bit of legal issues that come from actually using other models on Sizebox Discord you don't want to get on somebody's wrong side, take something that's not yours, use it on your YouTube content, and then that person finds out that you use their stuff. It's also something that you want to also avoid as well. Now, you can see here, I'm messing around with her hair. I'm just kind of showing you guys like what I can do with her. Um, just spinning the model around, making sure that she looks good, and all sorts of things here. And this right here is like you can see uh, some familiar hairstyles with especially with Akako like for an example that one being Amaya and then what I want to do is I want to try to undo that because that's she's not really Amaya and she turns right back into Akako and so that's kind of like how I do it with these models is that I can create and customize each and every model now if I want more hairstyles what I can do is I can click Boof, and I can go onto the website and actually be able to um, um, purchase different more hairstyles than the ones that they give you in Vroid. And again, following their terms of use, people who make these hairstyles they may not want you to use it for commercial use. So you want to make sure that you read their terms. So if you do find one that you could use it for commercial use, you want to be able to follow that and be respectful to other creative users and their content, right? Now, could you be a jerk and not do that? Could you be a jerk and use their textures anyway? Yeah, of course you can. But again, in the spirit of being a good person, you don't wanna actually use someone else's content because it's not right and it's not yours. So let's try to follow and be good, good citizens, right? All right, everyone. And that leads us to the last part of our video, which is a summary of what Sizebox is. So I already told you what Sizebox is, right? And if you've been living under a rock, you guys know that Sizebox is pretty much like what everybody uses whenever they feel bored and they need GTS type content for themselves that they can make. Now, how do I actually like make make them and pose the models? You're going to be seeing it right here in this video. Now, it's easy to use, right? Now, I don't actually use Sizebox for, you know, to mess around. I kind of just use it to take screenshots and essentially kind of capture and make stories out of the screenshots that I create. Now what you're seeing here is that I posted a sky dome here to cover up that little technical problem with the models where you see the models appear in the background. I'm not too sure why that happens, but the way I overcome that issue is by I by posting a skybox and by essentially covering both Travis and Akako in this picture you see here. Now, what's interesting now is that you're noticing like the different shadows, the settings and all sorts of things. Now you're you're seeing me making sure that everything is max. That way, all of the content that you see is beautiful. You want to be able to mess around with it. You can mess around with the field of view. You can um, mess around with the shadows. As you can see here, the field of view is a very warped perception but I always prefer to do through 45 and that way I can kind of get an up close shot where everything doesn't look distorted. Now that's just kind of like a little way of me just checking around. Here now you can see me messing around with the shadows to make sure that I get the right lighting that everything doesn't look too pixelated and you're seeing the light going from one side in the end and be able to translate on the side on the right. Now the right is a transformer, right? You can translate the models, you can change their size as you can see here. 
and you can also move the model around. Just pay very close attention to my cursor and what the things that I'm pressing here. I can make the model as small as possible and then I can move, click move, place Travis on a cockle shoulder, be able to use the Y and X axis, axis to move them around, find a good pose that I can mess around with, that way it can kind of expedite the process. And right now I'm looking for a pose for him to sit down. There you go. But notice how he's just kind of just looking down and appearing a little bit static, right? Or what I'm going to do is I'm going to move his face around and try to have him look towards Akako. And then I can mess around with his morphs, which is basically a um, rigged facial features that he can like smile, he can look sad, he can also like, um, you know, have certain appearances about him that gives him a little bit of personality. And you're seeing me moving around his bone structure to, in order to kind of pose him for the scene, right? Now, what you're seeing with both arms being moved, if you look on the left, that's because it's on rotate pairs. And what I do is if I want to move one individually, I will turn that off. And now with Akako, we're going to try to um, see if we can try to um, find a pose for her. But instead, because I like where she's at, I can just keep her as, as she is and then adjust her hair to make sure that nothing is clipping and that nothing is, is um, you know, looking distorted. Like you see how her hair is clipping within her shirt? We're going to try to fix that. And I'm going to go ahead and just like be quiet and just kind of let you guys see for yourselves. Now, those are called bones and the extra are the extra bones that control her fingers, her hair, or even sometimes um, certain clothing. And there are there are extra bones within her model that you'll be able to move around. That way you can get a good scene. Now, right here, you can see me do exactly that. Just adjusting her her hair. That way it can kind of look a little bit natural flowing instead of just hanging there. And then you want to make her smile. There you go. And you see you kind of give her like a bit of facial expressions. And that way you can kind of, um, you know, see how that works out for the story. Why do I always choose the shoulder? It's because it's convenient. And also it's a little bit of how the way the uh, characters can transport with the with the model. As for storytelling as well. And then you're seeing me, as I mentioned earlier, you can move around her fingers, adjust it, just be able to mess around with the X and Y axis of the fingers. And then I um in the next video I've told you guys I will show you how you can customize the models, the textures, and the skin. Um, you can also do a, all sorts of things with that. I think this is going to be about a three-part video because there is a lot more. We're gonna leave Sizebox for a moment, and we're gonna go into Vroid and Blender, and that can in itself can be a little bit technical, but I think for the most part if I explain it to you, I think you'll be able to understand or follow my video here. Now, all I'm really doing here is just kind of showing what, what kind of stuff that you can do with it. For, there are others who use it to kind of play around with it, but me, on the other hand, I use it to basically, you know, make a little bit of fun comics for you guys. And there you go. You have kind of like a little bit of um, of, of a pose there with Wakako. Now, as you noticed, um, it's a little bit grayish with the colors. Um, I'm going to explain to you that I also use Photoshop to help with these pictures. Now, in the next video, you'll see how I also do that as well. So, all right, guys, so that's going to end the video for now. Um, I'm going to do a part two video and I'm going to show you how to convert models and I'm going to show you where you can get the content. Um, you can either you can actually convert your own content as well. Um, you can convert maps, rooms, um, all sorts of things, entire stages. But keeping in mind, as, as I've told you guys about the legal stuff, 
you want to be able to be very careful with that right you have to use them in the way where it doesn't break too much rules and you have to be be mindful that there are some assets that are created by people and you want to be sure that you don't you know misuse them um but the more so important factor on this is the model thing and i'm just going to tell you right off the bat as i've said several times in this video to create your models follow what i tell you about creating your models that way you can have a little bit of originality right now originality is important because that's how you can create good content right you want to create your own characters and so vroid is the way to go where you can basically create your own anime style characters there's also other ways you can do it you can also create daz models as well and you can convert them into size box but that's a very difficult process and there's a reason why um, I don't actually do that because DAS models in itself are very complex um, models and they have to be mapped whenever you um, convert them into the conversion tool. Now, in the next video, I'm going to try to make it as short as this video and I'll show you exactly how to convert to create a V-Roy model. We're going to start one from scratch and then we're going to convert that model and then we're going to um, go from from Vroid to Blender to from Blender to the size box conversion tool then we're gonna convert the, the size the, the model from there and then it's gonna be ready for a size box so I know it seems like it's a lot but trust me guys it's as easy as it sounds when you see my video you're gonna be like oh size this is not hard at all it looks technical but it isn't so thank you guys for watching this video stay tuned for part two I'll show you guys exactly what it is and also for the stories, yes, um, part two of My Tiny Miracle, for the for those of you who are YouTube only, is coming in about a couple of days. So stay tuned for that video, and I will see you guys next time. Take care.